All right, everyone. So welcome to Light Painting Brushes Live June edition. Um, I'm I'm going to mess her name up, but then she's going to have the opportunity to tell you exactly how you say it. So uh, Politica Russo, um, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> yourself and where you're from. And I am so sorry for butchering your name there. Don't worry, I Jason. First of all, I'm incredibly honored to be with you tonight and to have a chance to speak about my life painting in Polaroid. So I thank you all very much. Uh, my name is Felicita Russo. Felicita. <laughs> <laughs> I am from uh, Naples, Italy, and uh, I have a bachelor's degree in physics and a master and a PhD in atmospheric physics. Uh, that I took at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County in Baltimore, in the US. Um, I did my graduate research at uh, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. I currently work as a, a researcher at ENEA, which is a um, research institute in Italy, in Bologna. Um, and I am a modeler on air quality and urban pollution studies. Uh, for my studies, I had to study uh, optics to work with the instruments that I was using uh, during my research. Uh, so I always say that I studied light all my life and uh, it was only natural for me to use light to express myself creatively. Um, I started with photography when I was a teenager and uh, I was in love with astronomy, astrophotography, so um, I started with the difficult things. And uh, actually, at the time, the, the only photography you had was analogical. So I started uh, um, uh, printing and develop developing in the darkroom. And I actually remember that the first, the, the very first picture that I uh, shot, developed and printed was a picture of the moon. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you know what? I'm really excited to have you here. Um, the work that you do is just really tremendous. So it's, it's a it's a great opportunity for myself to be, you know, here and, and sit down with you. And I'm really excited about this second question after hearing some of your background. So. Um, you know, I recently started asking experienced light painters, uh, what is light painting? So what is light painting? What what would you what would you say light painting is? Okay, first of all, I have to say that I consider light painting um like a form of art and not a photographic technique. I I follow the uh, the show when uh, Laura del, pra del Prato <laughs> because I think this is the right way of saying her, saying her name because it's in is Italian um, and uh, I actually agree with her very much on the fact that she was talking about the time dimension of light painting uh, the the fact that we we light painters we uh, do our art in a four-dimensional space. Um, as I said earlier, I studied light all my life um, uh, because the light for me is a tool to measure things that we cannot measure with other tools. Uh, in general, uh, light is a kind of electromagnetic uh, radiation, no? So there is not only, that's the part that we can see with our eyes but all the other uh, radiations that we have, we always use them, not only in astronomy, but also in medicine and biology. For example, uh, in astronomy, okay, we, we get images in different wavelengths from stars. And so everything we know about the universe is, we, we do know it because of light, because of radiation, but also in medicine, uh, or biology, when we use a microscope, we are using light as a tool. When uh, we do an X-ray, uh, we are using uh, electromagnetic radiation as a tool. So uh, I remember that during my college years, I did a study in which we used the light that was coming from the sun to measure its um, magnetic field and the velocity of rotation. So for me, it was incredible that you can measure a velocity 
by collecting and elaborating the light. Uh, this was fascinating. And then I said, OK, I can use light to explore something else that is inside of me and you cannot see from outside. So I, I use light painting to know better myself. This is my approach. You know what? I, I got to say this. This will probably go down as one of the best answers <laughs> to that question. <laughs> That was that was great. Um, you know, how long have you been light painting? And and tell us a little bit. How did you discover light painting? Okay, I discovered light painting by browsing the internet on Facebook and Instagram. I was looking at pictures that you guys, because you were amongst the the first ones that I that I knew were doing light painting. But the first picture I remember seeing and saying, I want to learn how to do that was a picture of Tom Hill. He, he doesn't even know that because we, we met uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, at the Festi Photo, but I didn't tell him. <laughs> and also a classic because there is a group of people of which I am part that is called Highlight is a collective of light painters in, in Italy. They all know Eric Paré, for example. Um, I started uh, uh, with light painting in around 2018 in digital because I was mainly a digital photographer. Uh, then um, I did also something with the digital. Uh, I was in a photography club, so we, we did a sort of a project that is called uh, uh, Tales with the Thread of Light. Um, and we had the opportunity to light paint in places that were close to the to the public at night, like uh, uh, churches and uh, you know Roman uh, Roman ruins, uh, and, and that got me very interested in uh, trying to say something with the light painting, not just using it for you know for, for decoration or for doing something that was yes nice but without meaning. So tell us, how did you get started in Polaroid as your way of sharing your beautiful work? Because this is the primarily the the way that you you know create the volume of work that you do. So how how did this how did this start with uh, Polaroid? Uh, that is a, actually a very nice uh, question in this moment because uh, there are two people that um, collaborated in me choosing uh, to use Polaroid. And one is here with us tonight, so, and also he doesn't know. Uh, but basically, um, I was studying light paintings and seeing all this picture, and I saw that uh, uh, Jason Page, when, when he was uh, uh, posting his pictures, he was also uh, always writing uh, picture taken in one single exposure, no Photoshop, things like that. He still does it. <laughs> he uses the same formula to post all his pictures. And it was funny for me because, you know, I have coming from analog photography, I have a, um, a view of digital photography that is not really, really as... Uh, taken by the camera because it always needs to be elaborated by some software. It's the software that is in the camera, but always elaborates the, it's not uh, as you take picture with the film or with Polaroid. And then I was already um, doing some Polaroids, not for light painting. I started doing uh, Polaroids when I was in US because I wanted to do uh, manipulations, emulsion manipulations is a technique that you use to get a painterly effect to your pictures. So I was working with that and then I, I said, okay, yes, try to do it in Polaroid, Jason, if you really want to. <laughs> and he actually did afterwards <laughs> without me asking him. But so the, the one one reason was that, and the other reason was that while I was uh, looking at the website, the Light Painting Brush web, website blog, um, I saw the making of the Night Owl by Chris Bauer. That is a, that mosaic, he, he does uh, mosaics of uh, digital light paintings. And mosaics are really a Polaroid classic. 
we have uh, Maurizio Galimberti that is a very famous photographer um, that does these, uh, I don't know if you've seen also um, uh, um, mosaics of uh, very famous people. There are important people that have uh, the, the portrait mosaic by Gal uh, Maurizio Galimberti. And uh, I like those mosaics very much. And I said, one day I said, what if I combine these two things together? We do like painting mosaic, but with Polaroid. That at the beginning was very difficult, I have to, to say, because it's not that you can um, translate what, what you do in digital onto the Polaroid, because Polaroids are very different from, the response to light is different than in digital. So I had to study a lot and try in the studying, I I didn't want to throw away a lot of uh, of pictures because they are also expensive. It's like uh, two or three euros per photo. So right. every mistake you make has a price tag on it. So, but I started trying and trying and finding a way to reference uh, uh, the space because that was uh, difficult for me just. To, to paint in the darkness and not seeing what you are doing is... So I started to work on this vertical panel like Chris was doing, but then I realized that I couldn't stick things or everything I wanted to stick on the, on the vertical panel. So I moved it on the horizontal position. I have now a, a table that has all the distances that are fixed so that I don't have to worry about focus and stuff. And I can put everything I want on the table. The camera is on the floor looking up and I can paint from, from the table. And that was important for me because it became very easy to experiment. You, you know, and the next question kind of goes into something hidden on what you're talking about. So, uh, you know, one of my personal favorite things about light painting is that moment that I see the back of my my screen on my camera and you know I get that sensation oh man I just created that and, you know it's it's a it's an incredible feeling but I think for me I know back in 2018 uh, I met up with Jason Page and he showed me light painting with Polaroids and I'll never forget you know us doing the light painting and then we go over and he's sitting there shaking the film the Polaroid <laughs> sets it down but you never do you never yeah. shake Oh, never shake it. Well, he was shaking it, <laughs> but it's a it's a whole new experience because you're you're literally not seeing the back of a, of a camera. You're literally seeing the light just transform itself and develop like right in front of you. It's like it's like experiencing the light painting all over again. Um, can you describe that feeling of of using Polaroid and and getting to that moment where you're anticipating seeing what you created? Yeah, actually, that is uh, my favorite feelings too. Uh, even before starting with the light painting in Polaroids, even if you take a picture of the landscape or whatever, you always have that uh, excitement, not knowing if the picture is coming out correctly. And then you see it changing in front of you. And it looks like something at the beginning. And then you see it converting to something else. Actually, they they take longer than the time we used to wait to completely develop. So uh, you actually have to wait. I, I usually now wait 24 hours to be sure oh, wow. that the picture that I want is the picture that I got. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I could deal with it. I, I'd be going crazy. But this, makes it, this makes it a completely different experience because you cannot uh, just try something and then wait for the picture to develop and change something in your setup. You have to learn. I have a little book where I write everything I do, so I don't make the same mistake twice. Uh, hopefully, I don't make the same mistake twice. <laughs> but it, this is also something that uh, teaches you about patience, for sure, planning, and a little bit of meditation. You have to be very motivated to do something like that. You just you don't just do it, you know, to have fun one night when you can do it with uh, with digital. You say, okay, let's go out and 
do some pictures. No, I don't usually do that. I usually have a plan. It has to have a meaning because it, it's it's more valuable in in some sense. You know, for for me, I think it makes it even more special what you what you do, and even more incredible the fact that so you're you're planning out this light painting, you're doing the light painting, and then you're waiting twenty four hours to see what you. <laughs> No, yeah. I usually do some trials and then in the morning when I wake up, I run, it's like, you know, it's every day is Christmas. Did you go back and see how did the picture <laughs> turn out? And this is very exciting if oh, you yeah. take it in the right way, because of course it's not for everybody. I don't, I, I can't imagine that everyone can find enjoyment in doing that. Right. Well, I got I got a couple images. Let's let's talk about some of these. So let me share my screen here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I came across your incredible work using uh, light painting brushes on these great flowers. Um, you know, could you break down with us the process? You know, I know you've elaborated on a lot of this already, um, but, you know, from the uh, what type of Polaroid camera are you using? Um, what type of exposure? Uh, you know, just walk us through the technique of, of creating some of these. OK. So the camera is usually this one. This is now the the latest. Uh, uh, do you see it? I don't see myself, so I don't yeah, know. If, um, yes. So this is the uh, now plus. That is the latest of the modern uh, Polaroids. Uh, it gives you the possibility to connect it to the smartphone, and you can use it in manual because Polaroids never made a manual camera. They are all automatic. So um, it gives you the opportunity to shoot in uh, bulb mode, which is what you need to do like painting actually. Um, and you have to keep in mind one thing when you, when you work with Polaroid um, versus digital. In digital, afterwards, you can balance a little bit the light. So if you get something on the, of the environment in the picture that you don't like, you can uh, darken a little bit the shades. In Polaroid, you cannot do that. So um, you, you cannot regulate the ISO because you have a fixed ISO of 600. So the only other two parameters that you can play with is the time and uh, the aperture. The time is determined already from which kind of design you have to make. Uh, I mean, you cannot decide to, to do 15 seconds because you don't want the, the environment to show in the picture. F 15 seconds allows you to do only some things, not everything, because those picture, these pictures are much longer than 15 seconds. I usually, um, just for my way of, uh, of uh, doing stuff, do multiple exposures. Like uh, uh, one flower is one exposure, the other flower, another exposure, and uh, the, the leaves is another exposure. It's just for me to, to not rush into things that I am a little bit anxious <laughs> as a person. So I, in, in this way, I know that I can do stuff calmly. And um, um, since I do multiple exposure, I don't need to have like two flashlights to make this picture. I, I use only one and I change the filter, change the, uh, uh, the blade and uh, I compose the, the image. The ones, the flowers, I, I, since I like very much the order, no, that they are all symmetrical, I use the rotator to rotate the, um, the flashlight with the blade. So the reason why they are so nicely put all the uh, all the petals are all in order because they are on the rotator and I don't do it by hand. So I have uh, uh, stands that uh, make the position of the flowers. If I do more than one flower, I have to know where one flower begins and the other one ends to not them uh, to not make them overlap too much. You know what's crazy is uh so I thought Jason Page he's probably one of the best um with what what we call spatial awareness. Um this guy knows mm -hmm. his environment where he's at. 
but you're you're stepping it up here. I mean, you're well, not that's shooting because, on film. That's because of the stance, because <laughs> I, I don't do any spatial. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't have it a is, spatial. but you're not you're not knowing, so you're not able to see like that double, like like say on my Canon 60, I can shoot um, you know, in camera double exposure, but I can actually see those layers. So to yeah, actually no, 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 hold, no, you see them. Yeah, that's that's what's fascinating. So that that takes it a step up right there. It's so so intriguing and just so great. Um let me stop my screen here. You you know, do you do you have a favorite light painting brushes tool? Um I know, you know, yes, being in Europe there they can be difficult to get a hold of, but do you have one that you like and and can you tell us why you like that one so much? Okay, I don't do many many portraits. I I don't like doing many portraits, but when I do, this is my favorite yes. portrait light. Yes, because the, the quality of the light is very unique, and it allows you to to give a very nice light to the model. I really like it. You know that that portrait light. I just I I would take that over a speed light any day, and the reason I like it so much is I have so much control over the shadows and the depth of where I want the light to be. It's just a, a tremendous tool. Um, so I have to ask, some light painters find inspiration from what they see, um, what they hear, what they feel. What would you say is your biggest form of inspiration for the things that you're creating? Um, of course, um, I, I get a lot of inspiration from paintings. Um, for example, Enrico De Chirico um, is a painter to which I I, that inspires me very much. But what really gives me the inspiration is music. I listen to a lot of music and uh, I would say most of the time I'm listening to music in the bathroom, in the train, <laughs> everywhere. So I am really influenced by what I, influenced as a person and even more as an artist. Um, I grew up with the rock music and heavy metal, this kind of stuff. In the latest uh, 20 years, uh, I started listening to progressive rock. But just in uh, about when I was starting light painting, I started, I discovered post rock. I don't know if you, if you know, it's also called the space rock, something like that. And um, Post rock and progressive um, rock has inspired most of my landscapes, the astronaut portfolio. That was all done, keeping in mind all these, uh, you know, these, uh, this landscape. There is a band that is called the God is an Astronaut. And that was actually the reason why I did the astronaut portfolio. That's uh, yeah, awesome music. Music's huge for me too. It's a big, big inspiration. Um, you know, I absolutely love the fact that you're creating your body of work the way that that you are. Um, could you share any pointers for others that would like to try? You know, light painting with a Polaroid. Um, you know, what what kind of advice would you give that person? Okay, besides uh, uh, having a little bit of knowledge of photography, because you have two, you, you have uh, only two options of changing the exposure in your in your picture. But uh, the advice that I that I would give is to use a lot of light. I really have uh, I really struggle in using normal tools that I can use in digital using them in Polaroids because the Polaroid has um, a very strong contrast and uh, it really needs a lot of light. And I discovered that uh, if you think that the picture, since you, you cannot see the picture uh, in its final form before the 24 hours, you have to learn uh, a little bit to anticipate the, how it's going to develop. What it does after the first half an hour, it gets darker. So if you have the, uh, the idea that say, okay, it's a little bit underexposed, uh, underexposed, but it's there. No, it's better to overexpose it because it's going to get darker anyway. So the, then there are all other tips that, uh, that I would give to anyone using uh, Polaroid in general. It's first, don't shake it because, <laughs> because when you do this, 
And uh, the, the emulsion is very soft when it comes out of the, of the camera and it can be, uh, it can break. You can actually um, make the picture look worse if you, if you do that. This is something that they used to do in the old Polaroids, the one that were peel apart. I don't know if you guys know that there were in the old times, um, positive and negative would, would have to be separated after uh, the ejection. Uh, other things is don't expect from Polaroid what you can do in digital. This is not a competition. Polaroid is done to do different things than digital. Actually, um, I would say um, that, that you have to learn a different approach to photography. Polaroid is produced only in one factory in the world. Wow. So it's a little, this little picture is really um, a miracle, a little miracle of engineering. And I, what I think is that we have to use it um, responsibly with respect and for doing meaningful things. You, you know, and you just hit on the next question, you know, because I, I wrote as technology changes and camera gear becomes more and more advanced, what benefit do you feel Polaroid film plays with them being used as a tool for being creative? Um, you know, you, you said it right there. So you, yeah, you, because it, it's uh, it, it's not that I use Polaroids because I want to show off no, that I am, right. you know, that I am, I can use Polaroids. But it's because actually I'm discovering that is making me a different photographer. The fact that you cannot uh, do uh, 20,000 trials on one set is important because you have to think about the picture before you go and uh, you do it. But there are also uh, techniques that are not directly applicable to digital photography, for example. I don't know if you can see this one. Yeah. This one is made with the silhouette inside the camera. You cannot do this with uh, with uh, digital. Or at least, if you can, I don't know how to do it in digital. <laughs> but see, you explore something, and then you realize that this uh, is becoming a complementary to your digital work. It doesn't have to replacing cannot replace a digital camera and uh, also the fact that one, one thing that is important is that you create something that is physical you then scan them like i do to share it on the web but the scan is never as good as the picture itself so you will want people to come and see your picture because this one that I have in my hand is different than its uh, avatar that is online. So you will be forced naturally to look for uh, occasions to expose, to, to show your work in um, expositions. And this is what I, I am doing. I did in the last years, I am doing and I will, I hope will uh, continue to do in the future. Um, you know, what would you tell someone who just started out light painting and not necessarily getting into Polaroid, but, you know, someone that wanted to try out light painting for themselves or, you know, is there any kind of advice you would give that person or is there something you would like to say to the community? Uh, to the people that are starting, uh, it was not easy for me at the beginning. So please don't get frustrated uh, and try to use your frustration to overcome it, build the stuff to make it easier, like I did. <laughs> because for me, it was, uh, it was very lucky, a very lucky choice. And to, to the community, I would say, if we want to see like painting being recognized as an art form, like I think we all do, we have to focus on the message that we want to give because Okay, the tools, okay, the technique, but anyone can buy tools, anyone can learn a technique. The message that is in the picture is yours and yours only. And the, the community, the world needs to uh, listen to people. So it's, uh, it's really important to have a message when we do 
our uh, like paintings. That that's beautiful. That's a beautiful message to to leave for sure. Um, you know what what is the best way for people to follow along with your work um, through your Instagram or through your website? Uh, yeah, what's for the best sure, way? For sure, Instagram is always updated daily. Uh, I have a website that I I am going to uh, now. I am kind of updating it so. It's better Instagram, but I have also the, the website that is felicitarusso.it. And I'm going to try it again. Felicita Russo. <laughs> yes. <Again? laughs> yes. Thank you so much. It, it, it's really so yeah. fascinating what you're doing. And it's it's so inspirational. Just to continue to inspire everyone with, with what you're creating and just not being afraid to be you. You know, that you're taking something and you're making it and you're owning it and you're creating such beautiful, tremendous work from that. Um, you know, is, is there anybody that has any questions that, that might want to ask? I, I do have one. So uh, the the app, can you, um, it, it, how is it linked to the camera? Like, is that is it uh, tethered? Like, so there's a cord that you you have to plug into the Polaroid or, oh, or Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Bluetooth? Gotcha. Yeah, so you you have there is an app that you put on the on the smartphone and it doesn't really work one hundred percent. Even that is an exercise of patience. You <laughs> you have to start like fifteen minutes before you want to shoot because sometimes it doesn't work. But it's getting better with time. Yeah, I I've got to try it. I've I've got to I've got to try it. So it it it's and the camera is one hundred fifty euros. It's one hundred fifty dollars. It's really cheap. So right. you can try the camera. Is cheap. The the film not so much. Definitely. Well, again, you know, thank you so much uh, for being here and and, and taking the time out this evening to talk about your beautiful work. So, is anybody else have any questions? I don't see any questions, but I just wanted to say, you know, I am a huge fan of your work. It's absolutely incredible. And I strongly encourage everyone to go check out her Instagram and website and all that stuff. It is the flowers are just the very tip of the iceberg to the extraordinary work that she's creating. So please go check it out. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.